ناري أمش أم شوكلي أم شوكلي أم شوكلي نعم أم شوكلي أم شوكلي Today was the U.S. premiere for this beautiful gem of a film that I saw a long time ago. Um, and what I forgot was that Kim Yutani was part of the jury, so she sort of like grasped onto this film and loved this film and championed this film to bring it here. It's one of four slots, so just congratulations on, on making a big programmer fall in love with the film. Um, it was Thank really you. fun seeing it with the public. They really, all the beats, they were all, they were participating when, when, when the child actress says something that we're not expecting, they were, they were reacting the way that I would hope so. So it's just a lot of fun experiencing this with an audience. Um, just going to go back slightly in your career, in your filmography. Uh, Claire Berger, um, had her film selected for the Berlinale, the competition, which is really cool. Um, and so you were three filmmakers that won the Camera d'Or. I just wanted to get a sense of like that project and this project. The was this second feature film of yours? Was it always going to be your first feature? Is this something that uh, was would manifest itself early on, or is it? No, actually, we've done with Claire a lot of shorts. That's true, we've, yes. we've done that together. And then Particle, we, we did it with Samuel and we were three to make the movie. So it's true that it was my first direction as a solo director. I don't know if it's correct to say that, mm -hmm. but solo director. And I had no plane, actually, because after Particle, I have to confess, um, I was pretty tired, or not tired, but um, I was afraid to, made it, to make another movie, actually. And I didn't want to shoot again. And I know we had the camera door, it's amazing. Normally you want to shoot, right? You want to... Yeah, you want to get right back at it. No, I didn't want, because it was a lot of... It was... We've been shooting since, I don't know, 10 years, non-professional actors, without money very painful you know a pr very painful process somehow even if we are happy to do it but for me i know exactly which part of my body i have lost which every movies i've met you know what i mean is that correct in yes. english so i was quite traumatized and i didn't want to shoot again so uh, because my formation initial formation is like i'm a screenwriter so I decided that it was a good, <laughs> a good way to, to live and to work. So I have decided all just to write for others and particularly my friends. And I was very happy actually as a screenwriter. And I was also a consultant, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, Benedict Couvreur was the producer of Amagor Loria once asked me to uh, make a consultation for her, for one of her projects. And then we became friends somehow and she told me but maybe I know you don't want to direct but maybe if you have an idea and you want no 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 come to me but come to me with two pages I don't want just you know I want something um, palpable yeah and I said no 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 I don't want to direct but thank you for telling me that and two years after that um, I had my nanny on the phone and Lorinda and she was so sweet to me and we were so close on the phone and it was a sad situation you know to to talk about what happened at that time but she was there for me again and it struck me that she was one of the most important person in my life she had that job the nanny job that nobody talks about and I thought there is something very emotional that I wanted to tell and during the night I just wrote the two pages about the story I had with my nanny and the fact that it's really unbelievable in that world that some women from everywhere, everywhere, have to leave their own country and their old children in order to raise the children in the Western country. It's messed up. It's, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I was, yeah, this is something I want to explore. Because there is, some, there is a lot of questions behind that, simple fact. So I wrote that. I go to Benedict and I say, oh, you remember when years ago you told me that maybe... So, 
here it goes. And you can read it and talk to me after that, if you like it or not. And she came back to me and said, okay, I like it. I think it's going to be a movie. I can, I can produce it. But I have to tell you, because I've done a lot of movies with children. It is true, she's made Tomboy, um, a lot of movies. And she told me, I'm okay, but it has to be a script that has to be like no more than 70 pages. Because otherwise we could not find the finance and it would be impossible to shoot because with a child of that age, it's going to be like four hours a day. Mm -hmm. So be careful, it's mm -hmm. going to be 70 pages. And I say, okay, I, I'll try my best. So um, it took us maybe one, years, one year and an half or two years to write it and finance it. It's an interesting way to build a blueprint when you have, like, when you say, oh, the kid can only be on set for four hours. It's a weird predicament to be in. But for me it was very useful because I could not lie to myself, you know, and say, no, we're going to shoot like ta ten hours. now. the low is the low and it's going to be four hours. So I had to imagine scenes that I could shoot in like one hour, two hour, four hours. And, and that was my guide. Yes, my yes. And that was the rule of all the process of the writing. And so it was quite helpful for me. Um, yeah. I have a personal question to ask you. Mm. So this nanny in your life, obviously she's a close personal yes. friend. I mean, she's an extension of who you are as a person. I was wondering at, throughout your life, even before you, you imagine, oh, I'm going to make a screenplay out of this, are you thinking about that the dynamic of that relationship, like when you're a teenager, when you're a young adult, and when, when you see friends with family and kids, and like, are you analyzing that situation whatsoever? No, I'm not analyzing it, really not. It's not like I'm not a scientist, no. Fic. no. So it doesn't go with analysis at that point, at that time. But it's true that all the time it was interesting for me to watch or to notice some little details and stuff. And it's true that I have a lot of friends uh, who have children and nannies. And um, I love to be with the nannies. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I feel better when they're around. So it's true. So I know them quite well somehow. Yeah. That's but interesting. yeah. So I, when I'm watching this film actively, I'm thinking about how the adult in this tandem has to, she not only has to work on her character in front of the camera, but she also has to potentially guide the other player who's diminutive, she's small. But in this case, what you told during the, the Q&A is that they were actually helping each other. It was like a tag team. So I wanted to get a sense of how much fun was it for you to see them sort of like team up and help each other? But then also I was curious about what you learned in that process. You said you, you were very used to working with non-actors, but this is a very, these are very special conditions. So I wanted to get a sense of what you learned, what you selfishly grabbed out of seeing this. I have to say that I'm always amazed uh, with non-professional for one thing is when you cast them and you think they have something in their guts, you know, that could be um, you know, good for acting. Um, in the same uh, shot, they can be like amazing. Really, you you like it's amazing. And then one second after that, like crap, it, a total mess, you know. And and it's really like that. So you have to, in a way, to edit in your head while you're shooting. Mm -hmm. That's true. And but what I have learned with. With the ch with the child, with with and and with Ilsa also, and all all of them actually, you have to trust them. You have to trust something. I don't know. You you cannot control everything. I think it's a, you know, you always have this idea that a director is the one who controls the world mm -hmm. uh, on the set at least, and he knows what he wants. He knows how to conduct everyone to get what he wants. And I'm not that kind of director, actually. Not re really not. I prefer a chaotic set, and then inside to find something true, and 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 then say, okay, they know better than I do, and we have to follow them. Do you trust their instincts 
they become your instincts potentially potentially and and then with a child it's very strong because you cannot control a child really you cannot it's she's going to be very auto like an automat mm -hmm. or t you cannot control her you have to trust her and and she have intuitions that are better than i i can imagine so and what i want to see in the short film history where i was really an active cinephile I can point to two other performances that are close, and there's Panette and yeah. there's Coila, and those are huge, huge roles. I, and I, I, I put this actress with those two others because the difference between being age five, six, seven, and eight, it's, it could be like 50 years difference between yeah. in 12 months. Um, so I, I, that must have been so liberating for you and so much fun for you to to witness that. It's like lightning in a bottle. Yeah, yeah, but it's. I I don't I don't have even the the words to describe it. Actually, it's just that you you watch someone. I mean, a little girl <laughs> um, becoming an actress, and mm -hmm. that's very mysterious. Mm -hmm. That that is that is really. Uh, and you have to accept the mystery. <laughs> Tell me about the choice of having her wear glasses. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Because I don't like. Maybe she doesn't even need glasses in real life, but. Um, Actually, I wrote that because I am very myop. I okay. don't know. You are very, very myop, and I see the world like that. So for me, it's very natural to. I don't know. But then also, it was very useful because Louise, she's not myop at all. She sees everything very well, really. And she loved the glasses because when she put the glasses on her nose, she was like the character. She was like Cleo. She was not Louise anymore. She was Cleo. And that was, that was fine then to play everything because she was a character. And at the end of the day, when she put up the glasses, mm -hmm. she was Louise again. And that was a, trig a trigger, can we say that? Yeah, oh, um, also a trick as well. A, a trick, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. sorry. A trick that, that works very well for the child. And it was also very important for me that um, her name in real life is not her name in the fiction. That was important. I wonder if Truffaut did the same, uh, the same thing with his kids in his movies. Yeah. Probably. Probably, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Put on a, a costume or a cape. Um, yeah. Tell me about the shorthand that you've developed. So Ines Tabarin, her, I was looking at her IMDB page. She has a lot of professional experience, but really this is one of her first. That's her first feature. Yeah, so first of all, t for you to have confidence in that person, that means you thoroughly went through her, her filmography, her CV, and I wanted to get a sense of what the conversation was before shooting, and also the shorthand that you helped to develop with this person, because that frame is so, it, it gives so much weight and palpability to every single event. It feels like every single event in this film is dramatic and, and it's so charged and um, I was just in awe of the choices that you made about having a tight frame but a loose camera uh, and really getting into the, the, the frame of mind of a child. Actually, yes, Ines, it was her first uh, long feature. She has done a lot of shorts and commercials before, but not long features. Mm -hmm. But she was also the assistant of Caroline Champetier, who made Ponette, actually. So, wow. uh, yeah, so th that was fun somehow. And I met Ines just because she was a very close friend to one of my friends. Life mm -hmm. is like that mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, she convinced me because one, she wanted to do the movie, like, really. Um, and she understood the child pretty well. I mean, she was really at that um, place level. and level, and she had the intuition that she had not to be, you know, the DOP who masterize everything, wants the perfect light, and put the camera there, and then wait for the actors to come in the, in in the, the, frame. In the yeah. frame. It could be messy. But with a child, it's, yeah. I guess it's going to be messy. And she had the intuition that she has to follow the child very carefully and to be very quiet and listen to the child very, very nicely. And then she met Louise. And when I've seen that 
uh, Louise loved Ines. She was like, oh, she's a super heroine, you know? She had the camera, she's beautiful, she has a team, and, and she loved that. And, and, and Ines was very close to her too. So I said, okay, that's enough to trust someone, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. um, because the main actress is, very com is feeling comfortable with her. And then we say, okay, let's, let's try it. And um, actually, I decided the format. The format? The format? But at the editing, okay. at the editing, and I, with my editor, we thought it was more fair uh, to give a, a glimpse of the vision of the child that way. Yeah. Um, but I have to say that during the set, um, Ines was very good with the camera à l'épaule. Yeah. Because she was very not excited, you know, like camera à l'épaule as you. Yeah. yeah. No, she was quiet as the child was and and she was they were on the same diapason yeah on the same plane yeah, yeah. that's why it works i i guess i it, guess it does it does absolutely um, we spent a lot of time with this child i mean i want to say it's 97 percent her film uh, but of course the title of this the, the the film is very specific and i love the fact that you isolate uh, the nanny at the the denouement. I thought that was a really excellent choice. Um, mm. Tell me about filming that, how special that was for you and capturing what are really complex feelings for an adult to deal with. Separation is, uh, mm. I mean, it's difficult for a child, but it could be really difficult for an adult to process as well. I just thought it was so beautiful. Thank you. But it's true that um, the movie is based on the child point of view. But the whole story of the movie is to watch the nanny another way. So she's more like a, um, a subject, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that the child uh, look at. And at the end of, of the movie, and it was written like that, um, the nanny is someone. She's not just the nanny. Yes. She's a real person. She has a life. She has a community. She has children, and and she has uh, um, a particular way of um, I don't know a perception of the world that earns to to mm -hmm. her. So it was very important that the movie gives her the last minutes, and because we realized that she was not only a nanny, she was a human being with feelings, and she also lived something very deep and intense. Mm -hmm. So that was very important. And um, I have to say that uh, uh, we were very stressed to shoot that, that sequence because it was the last sequence we had to shoot and it was at the airport and it's the goodbye sequence, yes. And uh, at 8 o'clock in the evening all the team had to take the fli flight back to Paris. So really it was like yeah. intense moment for everyone. And Ilsa, who plays Gloria, wanted to stay in Cap Vert with her family for mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So between the little one and Ilsa, who became actress together during five weeks, it was the last shot, the last day before we're taking the flight. And they really say goodbye to each other. And it's a real goodbye, you know, like, so long, my friend, you know. And, and, and it, it was stressful, but somehow it fits perfectly the emotion of um, the, m the mm -hmm. fiction, mm -hmm. the movie. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it's very emotional. That's a very happy, magical moment uh, mm -hmm. when you're least expecting it. Um, your next project is called Happy End. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope there's a happy end to Happy oh, End. Oh, I hope um, so too. Maybe I'm going to change the title. You went into a crazy, you touched upon uh, animation in this so. film. This is full animation, and as we know, we can't even date it because sometimes uh, it just takes so long as a process. But I'm just curious about your curiosity in terms of using that film language as something to uh, explore your ideas. Um, I was just curious about how meaningful that is for you. Maybe what's, what's, it the, what's the attraction? It's. I have several answers to that, but first of all, I love people with draws. I don't know, it's just that I love them, I love to be with them, I love to take coffee with people with, <laughs> with a pen. You know? doodles. Yeah, I, I, I feel better in my life when I am with those people, so I want to work with them, that's, that's first of it. 
Um, and then maybe it's a schizophrenic uh, way of, um, of me as an author, is that I can tell some stories in a realistic way and sometimes I need this fucked up world, which is animation, to express myself. But I could even change my name because it's like another me, but mm -hmm. who has to be to express it. It's, uh, uh, yeah. And I felt that it's a very funny way to, yeah, to, to ask questions to the world. Yeah. yeah, and to be, to have less limitations in a way to discuss potentially really problematic things. Less limitation, at the same time, it's very, very expensive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's true that if you want to destruct the world, you can do it in one frame, and yes. that's not that expensive after all. Yes. So that's an open door. Maddie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for this film. Um, like I said before, I was just like, it was a small gem that I discovered last May. And um, I'm happy that international audiences can not only see it, but they can also relate to it, even though it's far removed from their reality. They might not have had a nanny in their life, but it's just, every frame is just full of emotion. And it's just nice to see uh, Oh, thank this you. type of this type of a relationship, you know, it does not exist in cinema. I can't even, I can't even think about another film as a reference point. So it's fun to explore complex human emotions with these two um, these two uh, people that you created. Um, so merci beaucoup. Mais merci à vous. <laughs> merci. Cool. cool. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.